Kevin. I am making a video for you to demonstrate some of the techniques that were needed to finish the mobile for your baby. Um, we did some experiments at home and we came across some problems and there were some skills that you need to use that I wasn't sure you necessarily had. I don't know what kind of crafting experience you have. So wanted to make the video because I thought it would be easier to convey all of my notes this way versus like 11 pages of written out stuff. So what we're going to do first, there's a few, there, there are materials you will need. Um, you're going to need 12, you're going to need 12 inch hoop, um, or bigger, but we'll talk about that in a second. You're going to need crafting glue. Really shine there. You're going to need crafting glue and you're going to need a yardstick, some other measuring device. You're going to need two different colors of yarn. Here those are. You're going to need one to wrap in the, on the hoop and you're going to need one to use to hang the animals with. These are going to come with you in your box that comes in the mail so that I had some extra, so I figured this would save you, you know, a little bit of time and money. So you can have these and use those as you need to. Um, you're also going to need, obviously, your wonderful stuffies. Get all those lined up nice and pretty. And you're going to need um, oh, a needle. I don't know if you can see that. You're going to need a needle and you, this is another thing I will send to you because I want to, I have tons of these laying around and you know, getting the right size is harder than it needs to be. You're also going to need scissors of any kind, pencil, ta-da, um, and then you probably need a way to hang the mobile while you're working on it and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm also going to send you the pattern like you asked for. So I'll send you the, the, a printed out copy of the pattern and you can use that if you do better with text than with this type of demonstration. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the hoop. This is the hoop that I finished for the mobile that I was working on to experiment with. Um, it'll probably be, a gift, it's going to be a gift for my nephew and so I'll finish that up at some point. Um, again, I wanted to show you like this is the yarn wrapped around and uh, around the hoop. I wanted to show you like the length of that. Um, this is a 12 inch hoop. This specifically finished piece is the inner circle of the hoop. The outer circle has this um, metal piece here. And oops, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, see, it has this metal piece here, so it kind of gets in the way, but it's good for testing. This is my test piece. And so I would suggest that you maybe go up a size. If it, I, I'm fairly certain there's a size above this, but where you have, you're going to have six animals hanging from the outer ring instead of four. It might be better to go a size up, but that's up to you. So what you would probably want to do is measure out the sizing and mark it with the pencil. And then you're going to put the crafting glue. You're going to put the crafting glue. Um, so you're going to put that down first on wherever you want the yarn. Try to do it like the length of the yarn. You're going to then take the, you're going to then take the yarn and I'm gonna pull a little bit. Oh, that's the other thing. That, uh, these balls that I have, you just pull from the center and the yarn will feed out and it'll stay nice and contained. And then you just want to put it over the glue and hold it down tight so that the glue can hold of it. Have some slack on the other side to help with that. And then you're gonna want, once that's on there tight, you're gonna wanna wrap the rest of the yarn around where the rest of the glue is um, about 20 times, give or take. This is what it looks like at 20 times. Pretty decent size, a couple inches or so. 
Um, and then, so just wrap it tightly around and press as you go to hold, to have, to hold the yarn to the glue. And then at the end, do the same thing, press and hold and let it secure on there. If it gets on the wood, just let it dry for a little bit. It'll start to set, like once it's, I don't know if you can see this, but once it's in there, on there and really dry, it's very hard and it won't come off. But a couple of minutes after you put it on this, the, the, the surface, it'll dry just enough that you can like rub it off, almost like rubber cement or a hot glue. And so you can get it off the wood that way. Once it's dry, it's real hard and it won't come off. So you're going to want to, the other thing is with the yarn, if you get the glue on the yarn and then try to rub it off, it tends to make the yarn unravel and fray, which won't look as good. But again, you can't really, if you, you'll never even see it if it's on the yarn. So I say just leave it and let it seal it all in place. For the strings, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the white yarn and you're going to want four, you, you're going to need to make four strings. They're about six feet in length, which is twice the length of a yardstick. And um, what I did was cut extra because you always want to leave room for error. Um, so you can just like, you know, lay it out, fold it over, and let the let the little extra that you'll get from doing that uh, just give you some room for mistakes. So you're gonna do that with three pieces, three. The final piece of yarn needs to be four feet in length. Then what you do is you take the yarn and you make sure it's all even on one end, fold, fold everything in half, and then you're going to tie a knot at the top, a loop knot. And let's get the yarn up closer. See, that's, this is what the um, mobile will hang from, from the ceiling. Um, this specific thing here has, only has five strings because there's only five animals for, uh, for baby Sam's mobile. Well, once you get this cut, you're going to want to, you're going to end up with a shorter string that you won't see here. Cause I already took care of it. Okay. So this is being tangled. Course. First, okay, so the first thing you do, take one of your balls, um, and you're gonna want to put it, thread all of the strings through it. You just thread it right through the top here. The the way that the ball is made, it's got a nice perfect little circle up there, and then there's a fairly perfect one down at the bottom. So you can just thread right through the center there. Put all the strands, all five or seven strands on, you're going to end up with one piece that hangs down lower. And that piece you are going to use to tie a knot and secure this with, and you'll cut the end off. Um, for the knot, it, this doesn't have one either. <laughs> okay. For the knot, what you're going to do is you're going to slide the, ba the ball on, put it up past where you want it. Tie a knot through, pulling all the string all the way through. Pull the knight knot tight, and then you're gonna slide. And the knot should be in the position you want the ball to stay, the bottom. You're gonna slide the knot through the center hole that you you strung the string through, and that will hold it in place. This one is already done, and I cut off the extra length, and I can't get the knot to come out, so I can show you, but. You can figure it out because you're a very smart woman. Um, and you'll have the pattern too. Then you're going to want to just turn, you're going to want to lay, the pattern says that you should at this point put the string on the hoops. And I say that that is far more trouble than it's worth. I mean, it is frustrating. The loops just slip around. I you I recommend you use the weight you temporarily attach these guys and hey and then put the hoop on 
the strings and use the weight of these guys to hold the strings a little bit more firmly in place, that is when you'll need to hang it up while you're putting together that part. Um, once you have all that stuff settled, you can take the hoop down and unstrand it if you want to firmly secure these, or you can firmly secure the yarn on the hoop and then weave in the ends for this. But we'll talk about both of that in a second. Um, so you're gonna like to put the animals on. You're gonna want to fan them out the strings, however you want them, and then you're going to put all the balls on first. There are four. Here's the two not on yet. Um, and then you're going to that will come pretty far down the string. The 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 middle animal is going to hang like right at the bottom of the string, but you can work that out as well. And then you're going to want to um, decide which and which stuffy goes with which area of the of the mobile. When you add the stuffies, let me talk about the biggest problem that we encountered. This guy super adorable super adorable I love him he's so cute he's got the little doodad hanging here he's adorable problem is he weighs about 10 grams more than the heaviest of the other animals and it's largely because there's just so much extra material here you know there's the whole pea pod there's this these there's two separate balls these are like two pieces this is like four so, and then I'm going to take some of the stuffing out for you on these because these are overstuffed as well. And that will even it up about two grams I found, which isn't really a lot, but it'll help. My recommendation is that you keep this guy on in the middle. It might be strange or it might not, not strange. It might just not be what you had wanted or whatever. But because he's so heavy, what we found is when we put him on the hoop, he pulled the whole hoop, hoop, he pulled the whole hoop askew and created a lot of problems that you couldn't really fix. And if you put him in the middle, it will just completely negate that. If that's not what you want, I am including in your pack, care package that comes with all of these guys, I am including the weights of all of them so that you can work on weight distribution to get everything even. Um, the carrot and the strawberry are the lightest. And then this is the second heaviest. Though this still isn't as heavy as this. This is really dense. So you could put these two opposite each other on the hoop and then group these two by the peas because they're the lightest. So that will allow the heavier ones to sort of displace the weight of the pea a little bit more evenly. When you put these on, you're going to take, you're going to, to obviously thread the needle. The needle I'm sending you has like a really huge eye because that's the type of needle it is. So it makes it threading it a breeze. You're going to want to, um, let's take, You're going to want to put this through the middle and then tr thread it off to the side like so. And oops. try to bring the needle out in a, underneath the leaves because then it won't be quite so obvious if there's like stitching issues and just pull it through however far you want. I pulled it way too far <laughs> and then once you have this set up and you know exactly where you want, you're going to want to weave in the ends. But because all the yarn is going to be different, I wanted to talk to you about how the stitching works. It's going to be difficult to show you this, I think, because the camera is not super great. But you can see very clearly in the pattern, too. The stitches make a V. And the V is in the front. So if you see conspicuous and you go behind the V, and then on the side of the V's are going to be like a post right here. You want to go behind the V and, and through the post if you can. And that usually will hide the yarn. Um, and then when you go 
Let me see if I can get this in here to show you. Pardon me too, because I have to, I'm nearsighted, so I have to put stuff into my eyeballs to see it when I work on it. Okay, so if you go through the, the V, like behind the V, there you go. Gotta get all the way behind it. All right, so there you are through the V. I don't know if you can see this. You're through the V, pull it through tight like this. And then if you look, it's back there. It's really nicely hidden. You can't tell it's there at all. It's really cool. When you're doing this, you're going to want to stay behind all the stitches and, and try to do zigzags or something that the, the more you change the direction of the yarn, the more resistance it'll get if it gets tugged on. Because like right now you can just pull it right through, but if you thread this through a couple more stitches, but at different, in, and then maybe turn around and come back or zigzag as you go around in a circle, you will provide a lot of extra stability for it. I would recommend weaving in about this much if you can, more if you want, less, but weave in enough to give it to make it really strong. With the peas, this and this may take some finagling, but with the peas you're going to want to go in this top part here and you're going to want to work the, 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 the needle all the way through down to the center of the bottom. When you get the, this all the way through, you can use the center will hide, be hidden like this stitch the two pieces together. It will hold the shape better because the shape is meant to be like that. And again, this will be a little bit flatter. It'll hold the shape better that way too. So it'll hold the shape better and you can stitch like crazy in here and just pull tight and you'll never even see it because it's all tucked away nice and neatly. What this will also do because this is so heavy is it will also add a much stronger anchor to, um, you know, to support the weight so it doesn't just pull itself off the string. This, that does happen like easily with this if you don't do that extra step. Um, I would say you need about like five or six stitches in here. I usually, what I, what I would do is this top circle, I would stitch for like five or six stitches right around th that circle. Let's see if I can make it closer for you. Okay, so there's the top circle. I would put just some stitches right right through there, hold it together. If you need to move out a little bit to keep them together, you know, you can do that too. Because every time you pull tight, it'll just pull it in and make it stay. And then their faces will face someplace other than heavenward. For the final part of this video, we're going to talk about putting the hoop on. This, you might... Want, you might want a second hand with it's kind of frustrating and you have more to to work with because you have more animals um let's do the light one it will contrast better all right so you're gonna take this you're gonna put them the middle string through the middle obviously and then this oh, I'm just making a mess of this okay so you put the middle string, string through, and we're not going to leave that there, that's just annoying. So you take the anchored stuffy, or the, the uh, not the anchored, the, you take the temporarily attached stuffy with the yarn still through, and you're going to want to go and make one loop. It's going to look... gonna look like this and the pattern says that this is enough to secure it once you get everything in place you should and actually this cross part should be on the inside I didn't do that terribly carefully I did that there so then you're gonna want to put some glue here to keep these in place because otherwise this just slides freely and then weave in the ends and or if you've already done that then don't 
and then you will have yourself a lovely little mobile. The hoop should be between, I don't have the third ball on here. This ball makes me look a little bit better. The hoop should be between the third and the fourth ball according to the pattern. What we discovered is the length of the yarn from the top to the hoop should be about 10 inches. And as long as they're even on all sides, like, who cares? You just do what you want. As long, you know. Um, and then, yeah, that's everything. That's all that I have for you. I hope that this was adequate in explaining and not just mystifying and confusing. If I have, and if, if you have any questions or if this video is completely useless, then you can call me. I'm going to send her in the email that I send you this video in and to confirm your shipping. So you're, you're welcome to call me. We can Skype. We can do whatever we need to do to get this done. If you need any help with troubleshooting or anything like that, I will totally support you the whole way because this is going to be so awesome and your wonderful daughter is going to be so loved and it's so cool that you were this happy for her. And I am like, I am very proud to have been able to work on this for you and help put it all together. And I will do anything I can to make sure that it turns out great and you are wonderful and happy. So thank you very much for using my services and yeah, good luck with this. I can't send me pictures. I cannot wait to see this. Have a wonderful day.